Hello, this is Ninja Blade Jr. and today I'm going to be showing you what I like to call the Bait Rush. It doesn't have an official name, but that's what I came up with. Now for this strat, I do like to be the hunter due to the extra butcher speed speeding it along, and the bear traps, meaning I don't have to risk taking as much damage. However, you can play as any of these. Now, the main goal of this strategy is to make it to the Nitro base camp while taking no damage at all. This is a single person lobby, but all the rules are still the same. You'll want to try and get the ship moving as quickly as you can and get onto this ice as soon as you can. A little bit of delay won't hurt too bad, it just means you can't do as much once you do get to the base camp before night falls. Now moving forward here, I will be ignoring most of the lootables as it gives me more time in the base camp to get more productive things done. However, due to the strategy's nature, I will be collecting wood along the way, as wood is very useful to this strategy. The reason this wood is so useful is later we will need it for warmth, but also it makes a very convenient thrown weapon to kill seals with due to the fact that seals will die when taking any contact from a thrown item. This includes anything sliding across the ice, which the wood will be doing very easily. So we actually need to kill two of these seals, as we want at least three meat, but I will be taking all four due to the extra chance of blubber, as well as saving time later on. Not quite. There we go. And, yep. So, as I said earlier, I did take the Hunter for the extra Butcher speed. It will just give us a little bit more time later at the base camp. I'm really hoping to get some of that Blubber, and there we go, as Blubber is super convenient. Blubber can be used to craft, as well as refuel lanterns, which is a convenient heat source that you can carry around. That means you can stay more productive, but also you can eat blubber without risking food poisoning. The lantern is more important in this situation, but having that extra piece of blubber does help, as you can actually let yourself start starving, which means that the gray circle is going around your heart, and then eat the blubber right before you die to get a nice long extra time where you won't need food. Now I am going to be avoiding these wolves, as I do want to make sure that we have enough time in the base camp to get what we need done. I know it's normally the hunter's job to take care of them, but in this situation I want to show off the most optimal strategy for you guys. Now up and over this bridge and a bit further down, there is actually a skeleton and a ammunition box that I do like to check, because they're on the way as well as they can contain keys or gun parts, which makes my life more convenient going forward. So if you look right there, that's the gunpowder, and the skeleton is just over to the left of it here. So let's just angle that way, and... Now, I never know what to do if I do get bone charms from this, as I am going to be pushing past where water is. Let's just take a little bit of this as well. So we're coming up to the wolf pass, and here we want to take out our meat and continue along this left wall. As soon as the wolves start howling, that means they're about to attack us, so we'll want to throw the meat as far forward as we can. Wolves will actually prioritize raw meat over a player, so we can just walk right past them. However, they will remember that we went past them, so as soon as I hear them howl again, I'm going to drop another piece of meat right here, which will keep them busy again. Now, we're coming up to here to place another meat, as well as two bear traps, as this actually does kind of abuse the wolf's AI, as they will get stuck right in this corner, and every now and then they'll pop free. We want to kill the ones that pop free so they can't eat the meat before it despawns, but it looks like none of them did in this case. Wolves tend to eat the meat within 10 seconds of reaching it, but because they can't reach it, we actually have until the meat despawns, a good number of minutes. This gives me plenty of time to deal with either the two to four cannibals that get sent my way, if the traders know what I'm doing, as well as to grab this. I'm actually going to be using the nitroglycerin to deal with the wolves. As I said before, they will remember me. As soon as any distractions in the area are cleared, 
such as raw meat or animals, they will actually hunt me down no matter where I am on the map. Now I'm going to pretend we got attacked by camels and have relatively low health, so I'll show you the safest way to deal with these wolves first. There are three different methods to ignite the nitroglycerin, um, but this will be the safest one. Essentially, you want to run till the bar gets a little low in your inventory, but not enough where it's going to explode in your hands. As we approach the wolves, we could probably drop it around here, as there is a very wide range explosion. I am going to get a little closer. Then throw a stick at it, and that crack noise means that it's about to explode, and we run, and there we go. Now, I'm actually going to go craft my blubber in to a lantern, that way I can act a bit more during the night. And since we picked up those planks earlier, I'll be able to just toss one or two in here to keep myself warm while I'm doing that. So I need one scrap. Luckily, there tends to be a scrap box around here or over here. So we should be able to get some. There we go. So now back to make the lantern. Now, if you don't feel safe going out during the night like I plan on, you can actually spend the night inside here crafting, using the nearby resources to keep the crafting going, as well as the wood burner nearby to warm yourself back up after each trip. Now I'm going to toss some pla oops, wrong thing. Uh, some planks in there because I'll probably need them later. Now I'm actually going to go grab that original piece of bait meat, as it still should be there, and it will be a little quicker than chopping up one of the wolf bodies or hunting down a rabbit for some food. If you want to be slightly more efficient, you could always try and grab it after you blow up all the wolves, but at that point I was already part way to the camp, so I decided not to. So I'm activating the lantern so that I can wander around a bit more at night and stay productive, but it does look like it's still rather cold, so I'm actually just going to get the nitroglycerin out of the box and leave it on the ground there, warm up, and then I'll take care of the next wolf pack. So up to the top of this hill, and grabbing the nitro. Now with this second pack of wolves, I will be showing a different method of blowing up the nitroglycerin, which gives you a little bit of damage, but doesn't require you to place it or throw anything at them. So it's a little less risk that they'll get free and attack you, as these wolves will not be stuck like the other set were. They'll just be distracted by the single piece of meat they're currently eating. I am starting to freeze very quickly here, so I'm heading back, uh, but it looks like my lantern wasn't actually on earlier. Not sure if that was a bug or what, but let's get myself nice and warm. While I'm waiting, I'll craft a gun, just in case this was a real lobby. I want to protect myself from cannibals or them coming to stop me. So now I have the gun, I have some warmth, I still have my lantern, it's almost daytime. So I'm just going to head out and get started here. Now there is one wolf near the nitroglycerin, so I'm going to show off a way to kill them pretty easily. You can actually kill a wolf with two swings and two swings, which is quicker than trying to them four times. Only one swing, but it does save you a little bit of health. So then you just run it along here. So you want to get it as close to exploding as you feel comfortable, that way you can keep moving quickly. I do have my lantern, so I'm not too worried about cold. As soon as I get close enough to these wolves, you throw some meat, and you're trying to get the whole pack. It did look like I get the whole pack, so I'm just going to throw one more piece of meat to keep them busy. Run up, and drop it as soon as it starts cracking. Oh, I messed up. There we go. And then I run away. Since I messed up, I did take a little more damage than you do only want to use this method if you've already fought cannibals, as it's unlikely they'll send more after you this soon. But it is quicker and make sure the wolves won't get free and attack you before you blow them up. So I am going to get a little bit more warmth, but then I can push down and deliver the nitro to the wall. That'll mean by the second morning the wall is completely blown up and I already have a gun. Oh, well, shoot. I forgot I used up all my wood, so I guess I'm relying on lantern power for now. If you are doing this yourself, maybe you don't waste all the wood like I did, but it should be good enough with just a lantern. I'm getting two bars from four, maybe not.
Now, you might be getting a little worried about your hunger at this point, but you don't really need to be. Besides losing your passive regen, the only negative effects from starvation come after the gray bar has completely encircled your heart. So you don't actually need to worry about it too much. If push comes to shove, we can eat some of the wolf's raw meat, which will damage our health a little, but will completely reset that starvation bar. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they may not have eaten the raw meat here, so I might be able to get some just... No, it might be in there, but it's not worth digging through the pile. If I need meat, I can always double back. So you can hear my stomach start to grumble. It's not happy with me. I'm starting to starve. You can see a little bit of the gray bar starting to appear. Once that reaches all the way around the heart, that's when you finally die. But until that point, the only thing I've lost is my passive regen. So I'll probably end up eating the wolf there on the way back. Um, all meat is the same when it comes to raw meat. It will damage you a little and give you a little bit of food poisoning, but will completely reset your starvation. If you really are concerned, you can always drop the nitro cell somewhere here, set up camp next to the tent, and cook the meat, and that should get you all the way back to the ship. So here, we're going to want to put it next to those icebergs so that we can clear them all for the ship to push through later. If you put them in the right spot, you can actually take care of all of them. Now, I'll be showing the third method of detonating the nitro. You want to get it low, you don't necessarily need to. At this point, you could do the rush method, the throne method, but in this case, I'm just going to shoot it. It cracks, meaning it's going to explode, so we just want to get out of here, and there we go. That is a early day two iceberg clear. Again, it's beginning of day two, ice is cleared, you have a gun, you have a lantern, you got a key, maybe, you're doing pretty well at this point. You could have thrown the ingot at it to explode to keep your ammo. At this point, you're set. Speaking of starvation earlier, I am I am taking a little bit of damage, but I still should be able to eat this and not suffer too badly from the food poisoning. And as you can see, the gray bar disappears, the green bar fills a little. It means I have that full green bar and the red bar to get back and cook normal food. And that is the bait rust strat. With this strat, you can get to nitro day one without having to worry too much about cannibals, as the most that will be sicked on you is four, and you'll have full health. Now, something to note, they may eventually nerf this by fixing the wolf's AI so they don't get stuck. That just means you'll probably need a bit more meat. Probably around four more should do while you get the nitroglycerin. Anyways, I hope you have a good day. Don't bully people too much with this strat, and have fun!